Harvey Jeffries had a problem. Hmm. He wanted to figure out how pollution affects human health. Now, we know what pollution is. Mm -hmm. It's gases, these little molecules like nitrogen dioxide and benzene, and smog particles, these ugly globs of carbon molecules. When you inhale, they can get deep inside your lungs. <coughs> and there, they cause lots of problems. Scientists can tell the lung cells are being damaged because the cells send out chemical signals. I'm really stressed. Scientists wanted to recreate this stress in the lab and study it so they could predict how different conditions affect human health. Here's one thing they tried. They collected exhaust from car engines, isolated the smog particles, dissolved those particles in the solution, and then dripped that solution onto some unsuspecting lung cells. The cells in these tests were a little stressed, Ouch! but not nearly as stressed as real lung cells exposed to real pollution. Huh? Something didn't add up. So what's going on here? Hmm. The tests were ignoring an important process that's always going on up in the atmosphere. Uh -huh. As Harvey Jeffries knew, real pollution gets even worse when it's cooked by the sun. <laughs> the sun's rays zap gas molecules in smog, breaking them up and giving them energy for other reactions. They recombine to form new compounds that are even more toxic. The longer this stuff floats around in the sunshine, the more poisonous it becomes. <laughs> Jeffries knew that if he wanted an accurate test, the trick would be to cook his pollution too. So he built a smog chamber on the roof of his building. He could fill it with exhaust, let it bake in the sun all day, and then he'd have some honest-to-goodness pollution to test. <laughs> But Jeffrey still had a problem. Aww. To really mimic real life, he needed to expose lung cells to pollution in air, not in liquid like those other tests. So Jeffries and his team built a special machine. They passed the pollution through an electric field. That gave every smog particle a slight positive charge. Then they pumped the pollution into a chamber with a positively charged plate. It pushed those charged particles downwards, just where they needed to be, onto a waiting plate of lung cells. And sure enough, the particles did their damage. The lung cells were very stressed, just as they had been in real live people. The machine can be used to predict how real pollution affects lungs, and now they're shrinking it down so they can take it on the road. With this lung in a box, they can accurately see how harmful the air is anywhere. Oh.